Migrant workers occupy a difficult space in our present day society. They build our buildings, they pick our food, wait for us at shops and restaurants. They essentially carry the weight of our economy on their backs. Yet migrant workers are paid low wages and often we find them treated as if they were expendable. At the same time, migrant workers and communities are also viewed with suspicion by Malaysians in general. They are seen as the reason behind the rise in crime, unemployment, and the loss of economic opportunities. In this week's Gen Meme, we discuss why we hate migrants and where did the sentiments come from. This is even more pertinent now as we live through the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, which has revealed a darker side to state xenophobia towards migrant workers as they are rounded up and detained in the name of public health and safety. They are your security guards, your construction workers, your farm hands, your domestic helpers, your restaurant waiters. They are our essential workers. They have always been treated as second or even third class citizens in Malaysia and their mistreatment begs the question, are we truly that xenophobic as a society to for this to be unremarkable. Today, we are talking to Altaf Deviati, Director of Operations from Iman Research, to share her thoughts on the spread of hate towards migrants in Malaysia. Thank you, Altaf, for spending time with us today at Gen Meme. It's a pleasure to have someone with your experience share her thoughts and um, ideas on the subject. And I think, especially with what's going on right now, there's a lot of issues that's related to the issues of migrant communities, migrant workers, not just in Malaysia, uh, but also around the world. And I think it's, 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 it's particularly fitting right now that this issue is, is a perennial issue um, because people will always be moving between countries, between borders. But we've seen uh, because of how uh, economic development has progressed in the past 10, 20 years, this issue has taken a greater importance and it's become something that people really um, have a lot of questions on and, and need better understanding of. To begin with, we, we just need to set the stage a little bit. Um, we, we, we want to get a better understanding of what migrants are, what constitutes migrants, um, specifically in Malaysia. So my first question to you will be, who is considered a migrant in Malaysia? Yes, this issue is actually a very pertinent issue, and particularly more it's actually been a permanent issue for a long time, but because of COVID-19 and the response towards, in particular, the crackdown of migrant workers and undocumented refugees and so forth, it has really brought this issue forward. And the discussion on uh, who, what, and why do migrants tend to be very vulnerable? Um, well, migrant workers, is, in my opinion, which is my personal opinion, it's actually a very rather new term. It's a new term to... Uh, in the context that humans have always been moving for thousands of years. In particular, the Southeast Asia, where a majority of the countries are actually uh, uh, maritime uh, societies. So we've actually been moving for so long. But post-independence, um, I would say, and in particular in the, boom, the economic boom of 80s onwards, I guess, the whole discourse of migrant workers started to come in. Um, referring to people who are supposedly non-natives, but in actual fact, it's really for referring to those who came later. But in particular, nowadays, I think when we say the migrant, we really are referring to laborers, laborers coming in from less developed countries than ours. So for example, Bangladesh or Indonesia, or as we perceive them to be less. So somehow people that come from more developed countries don't get that label as a migrant worker. There was a time factor there. You know, you, you, you said that um, migrants refer to people who came later. Is there a specific point in time? You know, because it's a lot of, I mean, Malaysia is a cultural melting pot. You've got people of different ethnicities um, who, whose forefathers, you know, I mean, I would say the majority of them came from elsewhere whether they were brought in, I mean, however they were brought in. So it's like, how, how are they um, separated from the, the people who are we currently consider as migrant communities, migrant workers, who might not necessarily be first generation even these days? For the discussion today, 
you could just split, uh, I'll stick to uh, micros in terms of laborers as what we know them today. Because when you or define it in the Malaita Madata, it's a lot wider and a lot more political issues uh, involved. And it'll just dilute that. I think it'll be another discourse on that. So the migrant that we're referring to is that, for example, is, uh, is laborers who came. Now, if, and I will stick to laborers post-independence. So if you looked at the 80s, the first wave of migrants were predominantly Indonesians who didn't come, uh, who came here as laborers. But if you, if you, if you look further, so Benanya, the first wave of uh, laborers from Indonesia, a lot of them came, was actually for the, uh, our, when Felda started, um, the settlements, yes, the transmigrasi or transmigrations, uh, the opening up of uh, estates and all that. In, technically, they were laborers too, but we kind of don't refer it to that. Um, but so, but in the eighties, uh, because of industrialization and because of uh, opening up our factories, then we started looking at migrants from that context of labors. Mm, okay, um, I think it's a question: Why do Malaysians feel uncomfortable with the presence of these migrant workers, these laborers? Is it um, to do with a particular kind of xenophobia um, or you know just you know do Malaysians actually see themselves as better than let's say an Indonesian worker or a Bangladeshi worker and if so where does that come from I mean we are all Southeast Asian isn't there a sense of solidarity or community um, yeah how I guess I mean if you think there would be but I think one of the things that I personally would think that the problem lies in is how we define migrants from a policy level. The policy that, that one, and secondly, how this has influenced society. Firstly, when you look at policy, the way we've, um, the, the definition of migrant uh, workers and what they're allowed and not allowed to do. And I'll give you one basic example of this. They're not allowed to get married. They're not allowed um, um, that's one of the things that was very clear. Some of the other issues are related to human rights. So when you actually already categorize a, a whole group of people of what they can and cannot do here in the most, in the, in the, in the more, that removes their human rights, you kind of take away the humanity of it. Because experts don't get that. Experts can bring their families. Experts can get married. And can, 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 um, actually, experts are allowed to have a life. Migrant workers are here only to work. Why? So how does that influence society? This is where I say that if your policy is to define a group of people that are no different than they are just like cattle or, or, or workers or work bee or robots, then that will spill over to how community sees them too. Why? One, because you don't have an integration policy. You don't have integration programs. You label them pati, penatatan pelizin, penatang haram, things like that if they're illegal, of course. So it kinds of, and after years and years of this, don't you think society then starts to dehumanize the group? One. Second, even if they don't dehumanize to that extreme context, but the sense of... Um, Respect kind of decreases. That's also that's uh, that's another. And then to top it all up, when there's ever a problem in the country, you blame migrants. Because you mentioned policy, could you just expand a little bit on that? What what is meant by policy? One part of the policy is integration on understanding each other's community. So you know the do's and don'ts, the taboos and whatnot, what's for. Second is also to understand of each other's roles. Majority of migrants who come here don't actually intend to want to live here forever. They're here to work. Their families and everything are in another country. So this whole notion that migrants are here to take over everything and get citizenship is 100%. It's not, it's, though there are some, which is natural. I mean, even for other countries too. But it's as though this onslaught that is coming is because of the lack of understanding of roles, the lack of understanding of... Uh, culture and um, when there is no attempt to do that you only create hostility so a policy that has to address this should be there 
Um, for example, um, if we're going to be in, uh, taking in so many thousands of, let's say, factory workers, and a thousand workers are going to be put into some district because the company is there, right? The factory is there. Shouldn't there be some kind of engagement with local district office and the community? You're having thousands of workers coming in that is from a different country. And it's only natural that locals should understand as well, um, not just the uh, community coming, uh, coming in to understand local sentiment, but sent locals should also understand uh, these newcomers are coming. And how do we, uh, how do you, gonna, how to get along? And the majority of them will come a few years and go back, but it's going to be a continuous process. So these policies are really not there. Our policy is this, it's really just, you're allowed to hire how many? You, uh, the minimum salary, their do's and don'ts, you can't um, um, have a family, you can't, uh, for, uh, if you fall sick, a specific thing, you know, your visa's revoked or whatever not. Those are the type of policies that we have which doesn't address at all the issue of how do you get along with the community.